parking tickets and leave me alone. Stick to something you know about. Listen, my daughter was about your age. Then she met a guy like you. Now she's dead. <laughs> you still believe in ghosts, P-Brain? He's a closet! This is all the whiskey you possess? Everyone out of the way of the bulldozer! Hello and welcome to Hello, This is the Doomed Show. I am Richard. Folks, as foretold in the book of Abon, I am here to discuss frickin' horror movie reference books. This is the third part of the series. Um, I did an episode, a solo show, just like this is a solo show, of uh, part one, which is the oldest of my uh, horror movie reference books, the ones I acquired first that got me into uh, reading about horror movies. Part two was the Euro cult and Giallo, or the Euro horror. I was trying to do a subliminal name drop for EuroCultAV.com right there. Wow for me. But no, Euro Horror and Giallo episode, so that one's also in the uh, the feed there, you're free to check out. But I wanted to get back to the more recent acquisitions of my horror reference library here. And uh, yeah, just finish up this topic, because hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Before I get to the books, I want to talk about what's going on with the show. Uh, this summer, I'm going to start taking it a little easier uh, for most of... Uh, 2021. I've been doing about three episodes a month and uh, I'm tired. So I'm going to reel it in, just reel it in a little bit so I can get some other projects done. Um, Also, I have a monumental birthday coming up this year and I was planning on taking the entire month of August off anyway. Uh, But yeah, I think I'll be able to space things out. So for the rest of the summer, maybe the rest of the year, it'll just be one episode per month. Um, I hope that doesn't try you guys' patience too much. Hopefully the episodes that come out will be that much more special. Uh, plus, you guys need a reprieve from my voice. I mean, have you heard my voice? It's hideous. But let us talk about these frickin' books. Uh, first up, surprising literally no one, is a Stephen Thrower book since Stephen Thrower has been taking up a lot of space on these episodes so far. I'm talking about the legendary, the massive Nightmare USA, the untold story of the exploitation independence by Stephen Jam Master J. Thrower. He probably doesn't go by that middle part, but this book is phenomenal. This book is like a fine wine that you sip or pour on your, your dead homie's grave very slowly. It is just a remarkable work, and I really hope that he'll do a sequel someday. I'm not sure uh, what that sequel to this book would be like. Uh, this is so great. Um, it just covers stuff like uh, like the Deadly Spawn. It covers things like uh, the Strangeness. And what he does is he covers not only the film, uh, but he'll cover the filmmakers behind the camera, of course, but give their complete histories outside of horror and whatever else they did that got them to that point to make that film. Then he'll go into the production history of that film. And it's just really incredible. Um, I think he talks about Axe and a couple other just like legendary uh, exploitation horror films. So get that if you can. It is so great. Next up, a book that I referred to a lot while Simon and I were talking about the Nightmare on Elm Street series, which is a book called uh, Never Sleep Again by Tommy Hudson. That's T-H-O-M-M-Y. Um, he did a phenomenal job covering the genesis of Nightmare on Elm Street, the pre-production, the casting, the production, the post-production, and the marketing, and the legacy of one film. It's a very fat book, but it is like more than you ever wanted to know about Nightmare on Elm Street. I picked it up thinking it was about the whole series because it was so thick, 
And I got a couple chapters in, I went, hold up. This is just about the first film. This is amazing. So highly recommend that one. Next up is a little gift I got. Uh, my pal, Jacob Gustafson, uh, the author of the Awful Awesome books, uh, like Awful Awesome Action, Awful Awesome Horror, and I think Awful Awesome Science Fiction should be coming out soon. Jacob sent me a book called The New Poverty Row. Independent Filmmaking. Excuse me. The New Poverty Row, Independent Filmmakers as Distributors um, by... Oh, no. Why didn't I write down the author? Jeez. I got this. Oh, duh. This was by Fred Olin Ray, so you know it's going to be a real book because he is one of the dudes who was an independent filmmaker as distributor. Uh, so, yeah, I need to uh, check this one out. It is on my to-read stack, but I haven't gotten to it yet. It looks amazing. Next up is uh, a little book called More Gore Score by Chaz Ballin. Uh, Chaz Ballin of uh, Deep Red Magazine. Uh, Chaz passed away quite a few years ago now, but uh, a lot of folks who were really into reading about horror in the 80s and 90s uh, cite Chaz as a huge influence. And um, I like what I've read of his. I don't think I've finished more gore score. He's very opinionated, to say the least. <laughs> but uh, yeah, apparently he was just a legendary dude. I cannot locate his other books. They're a little too rare. And when they do show up on used sites, they're way too expensive. But uh, more gore score is a, an interesting little, um, a little spicy nutmeg. I don't know. It's a little, it's a little nephew. Next up is Are You Alone in the House, which is a book edited by Amanda Reyes. Uh, this is a fantastic book about uh, made-for-TV horror movies. It's a great reference book. The reviews are all really solid by everybody involved. And uh, yeah, it turned me on to some titles I would have never, ever thought to seek out. So um, check out Are You Alone in the House. Um, I have another book I have not read on my list here. This one's called The Kaiju Film by Jason Barr. Uh, Lietta and I were at a library conference, and uh, I spotted it, and she managed to snag a copy of it for me, and I just haven't even cracked it yet, but it's probably great. Uh, next up was a gift from my pal uh, Tyler. Tyler has been on the show quite a few times. Um, he saw the longing in my facebook messenger face and got me uh taking shape the uh, book about the halloween movies by dustin mcneil and travis mullins um this book part one i don't have part two yet but part one is so fascinating it's really really a great read um it's so fun to see the history of the halloween franchise taken so seriously and apparently the second book is about all of the, it, it focuses on all of the Halloween sequels we never got. So all of those screenplays that were bouncing around for years while uh, production companies couldn't decide what to do and what director and writer to go with, all these screenplays were being pitched. So this book uh, looks at those films we never got. I'm very curious to see how that shakes out. And speaking of people buying me things because they're freaking cool people, uh, Brad uh, got me a book called Analog Nightmares, shot on video horror films of 1982 to 1995 by Richard Mogg, M-O-G-G. -G. I've read the introduction of this one, and I read the uh, chapter on uh, Boarding House, and that's as far as I've gotten so far, but uh, this book seems really cool. Uh, as you know, Jeffrey and I have been attempting to cover some shot on video films every summer uh, just to destroy our brains. And of course, we did Boarding House many years ago, which was, that's just something else. I've got a copy of Crystal Lake Memories uh, by Peter M. Brack. I believe it's Brack. Could be Bracky. B-R-A-C-K-E. Um, I don't remember where I got this one. I Maybe Brad or my wife, Lietta, got it for me. Or my mother-in-law got it for me. Somebody got this book for me. Uh, but it is the definitive resource on the uh, Friday the 13th books. 
Can't say enough good about it. It's just such a solid freaking book. Next up is a classic. Oh my god, this book is a classic. The Psychotronic Encyclopedia of Film by Michael Weldon. Wow. I Now wow. Now wow, brown cow. This book is one of those ones that you watch with a notebook. You watch? You watch a book? You read a book with a, uh, a notepad, and then you frickin' take notes of titles you want to see. Um, I have made pages and pages and pages of notes uh, from the Psychotronic Encyclopedia. It is crazy how much insane stuff is packed into that book. I don't know how old that one is, but if you can find a cheap copy of it, just grab it. Even if it's falling apart from the previous owner's grubby hands, you should totally freaking get that book. It's wonderful. In a similar vein, I've got some uh, some Video Hound books here. Uh, the Video Hound's Complete Guide to Cult Flicks and Trash Picks, uh, edited by Carol Schwartz. This is another excellent resource for you to find films you've never seen or to, uh, you know, jog your memory of things you have seen if you're getting old like I am. Uh, next up is Video Hound's Horror Show, 999 Hair-Raising Hellish and Humongous Movies by Mike Mayo. I have owned this book forever, and I just don't know anything about it. I know I've grabbed it once in a while, but it's just, it's just not stuck out in my memory <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, the same could be said for Video, Hound, Video Hound's Dragon, uh, Asian Action and Cult Flicks by Brian Thomas. Uh, this is also a great resource for, for uh, finding Asian cinema. Uh, the one I mentioned in the previous episode, The Sex and Zen and A Bullet to the Head, I prefer that book a lot more. I think there's a lot more, at least like a, a memorable sense of passion to it. And this Video Hound one feels like a catch-all encyclopedia so you can at least find out something exists but i don't want to like undervalue these books just because i don't remember <laughs> the last time i opened them uh doesn't mean they're not amazing resources ma are you crazy mm -hmm. another decaffeinated coffee well caffeine bothers your dad but why keep trying because i love him and besides this new one tastes great mm. new improved ground sanka brand decaffeinated coffee we think a blend of two kinds of beans make it twice as good, and it can be a lot better for your family if caffeine bothers them. Well, I don't like it. See? I love it. Oh. New ground Sanka brand decaffeinated coffee. It's a loving cup. Speaking of amazing resources, uh, we've got the Video Watchdog book by Tim Lucas. Um, this book, I believe might be a little dated the writing because you know tim lucas of video watchdog and all those great uh, mario bava commentaries is in this book but a lot of it is about the different versions of films so if you're really hung up on different versions of films and finding the most complete version you can i know simon and i know someone like that but we won't go into that here this book is great for like that transitionary period right before DVD when you were trying to find tapes from all of these like maybe not so honest sellers and they were giving you what they claimed was the uncut version of a film. And of course, um, if the movie is 25 minutes shorter than it's supposed to be, there might be something wrong with their quote unquote uncut version. But yeah, it's still a great read. Um, I really wish I had that ginormous uh, Mario Bava book that uh, Tim Lucas wrote. Um, I really like books that will uh, cut your legs off if you drop them, or books that are so big you have to read them from a helicopter. Keep in mind, the book is on the ground. You're in the helicopter looking down at the book. You got it? Got it. All right. And for some reason, I thought my list was longer, but it turns out my list is not longer. Uh, the last one on this uh, frickin' uh, list here is uh, Spooky Encounters, colon, A Guilo's Guide to Hong Kong Horror. Uh, Guilo being what uh, uh, what Chinese and uh, Hong Kongans call uh, frickin' white people, which I love. But that's by uh, Daniel O'Brien. 
Another really cool and passionate book about a subject I love very much. I love Hong Kong horror. I love those hopping vampires. I love the kitchen sink effect where the movie feels like it can't go any farther, but then it goes three times farther than you expected. Hong Kong cinema is some of my favorite stuff to like, I don't know what I'm getting into. And even when I do, even when I've read how crazy a film is from Hong Kong, it really doesn't prepare me for exactly how crazy it's going to be. So yeah, if you can find that one too, give it a pickup. What else can I talk about? Well, before I go, I will take this opportunity to uh, plug some uh, of my books that I've written since we're talking about books. If you go to the old Amazon.com, you can find a little book called Giallo Meltdown, a movie thon diary by me. Uh, that's Richard Glenn Schmidt. If you're really looking for my name. I also wrote a book called Doomed Movie Thon, and I wrote a little book called Cinema Somnambulist. All of those are on the Amazon. Uh, if you look around at my name in Amazon, you'll find a couple of magazines I've written for. I've written for Monster with an exclamation point uh, magazine, and I've written for Wang's Chop. That's W-E-N-G apostrophe S Chop. I don't get any money from the magazines, uh, those costs go right to keeping the magazine alive. I am more than happy to see my name in print because I'm a horrible narcissist. And uh, that's the kind of things that horrible narcissists do. They write movie reviews. As for other projects I got going on, um, Giallo Meltdown 2, the sequel to my Giallo book, where I review lots of Giallo movies, um, is uh, coming along. I'm on chapter seven, and it's uh, painful doing movie thons. Now that I'm a, in a, now that I'm at an advanced age, watching like 15 movies in a weekend is getting more and more difficult, and just unpleasant for my brain. Um, I'm trying to keep my uh, spirits up and not take out any of my discomfort and rage from, you know, being tired on to the movies. Only once in a while a movie offends me to the point where I take the DVD and snap it in half, and then uh, I want to quit writing about movies because I'm so pissed off. A little movie out there called uh, Morbo. It's uh, an Italian? No, it's a Spanish film. It's a Spanish film, and there was some really egregious animal torture in it. And um, I snapped the movie in half, and I was shaking with rage, and uh, it made me want to never watch. Well, it made me never want to trust a filmmaker again. Like I want to have a film vetted. I want to pay someone else to watch the movie for me before I bother when they're gonna freaking torture animals in the movie, and it makes me feel like I'm losing my fucking mind. But anyway, seven chapters of Giallo Meltdown are done. Um. Is that past the halfway mark of the book? I think so. I hope so. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be 13 or 14 chapters, you know, each chapter being a movie-thon. Uh, but I'm trying, man. I'm really trying to make this book um, better than Giallo Meltdown. You know, Giallo Meltdown was like six years ago, five years ago. I hope I'm improving as a writer. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully when I put this one out, I won't release it with all the horrible spelling errors. Uh, don't worry. Giallo Meltdown still has lots of spelling errors, but when I put it out, I decided that my one read through of a 200 plus page book was fine and not thinking I needed to take a breath, look at the beautiful uh, proof copy and then sit down and proceed to read it all over again and with a highlighter and fix all the mistakes I missed the first time. I really thought I didn't have to do that. It turns out I really had to do that. So the first 70 copies, which it's, I can't even believe I sold 70 copies, um, all have horrible mistakes. So if you notice like mistakes on every page of Giallo Meltdown, you've got one of the early version. You got, you've got the early version. Um, yes, the book still has some errors left in it, even after my second pass. Uh, but likely I will never go back and correct those. <laughs> I could go back and correct some of my opinions, 
there's a few films in there I was probably really shitty about, and now I'm I feel guilty that I love that film now. But you know, whatever. It's a little moment in time. Let's leave it alone. What else is going on with me before I hang up on this um, one-way Skype call? I've been working on an album called uh, Melting Lumberjack. Um, the title track is about probably about that movie Fire in the Sky. I kind of came up with the title before I thought what it was about. But it's a very interesting album. I'm trying my best. Folks, if you've talked to me over the years, you know I'm always putting out these weird solo sound records of just noises and weird crap I make with my guitars uh, between my band Gyro Jets Music. Because, you know, Gyro Jets, there's two other people, and we got to work and hang out and learn songs before we hit record, and that's always... Um, that's always a pain in the butt. So with me on my solo projects, I can just do whatever I want and release it. But over the years, I've noticed that I am not happy with any of those. <laughs> so I'm trying to put a lot more work and care into this particular album. I will definitely tell you guys when it's done because I am sick of working on it. I'm so tired of this album. You have no idea. Um, usually I put stuff out like after a weekend. I'll record an entire album in a weekend and drop it on Monday. Uh, this one has basically been going for a couple years. I've been working on it off and on for like two years. Didn't even know that I had all this stuff recorded already and then whatever. It's boring. But that's what I'll, that's the other thing that's going on with me. <laughs> uh, as for the podcast, as for what's going on with the show, like at the top of the hour here, um, I mentioned that uh, we're going to slow things down this summer. Um, I love talking to my co-hosts and I love reaching out to you guys with your ears and telling you things about movies. Uh, but all of the rest of the podcast world is a real pain in the ass. That does not include getting to talk to other podcasters and getting to be on a network, strictly talking about the editing process of a podcast and the promotion stuff of a podcast. That stuff does not interest me at all. <laughs> As you can see, I, I don't work very hard on the, getting this show out there, but it feels like a chore just to do Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and get these things going. It's just, it's just a nightmare. What we need is a producer. So like if the podcast was in the, not in the red all the time, because like the amount of time and effort that we put into the show, we never turn a profit. We will never turn a profit uh, despite the best efforts of some very kind people who have slipped us some cash over the years. Uh, Mark, I'm talking to you, of course, we would need to make money, like lots of money. And I could hire a producer and an editor, a producer to make sure that, you know, we made money on the thing and it got promoted. And then a freaking uh, an editor to do all the editing for me. Because <laughs> I, I've tried to, like, be real and reduce, reduce, um, I've tried to be real and release these episodes completely raw, and I can't. I just can't not edit these things. <laughs> but that's just me complaining. So, 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 long story short, too late. A little less of a productivity here at the Dune Show house, but uh, fear not. We're going to be hanging around. We'll be here. I'll probably guest star on some other people's shows so they have to edit. I, I think that's good on them for letting me. Uh, I was able to be on the Talk and Stock podcast with Barry and uh, Darren. I was able to be on the Kiss the Goat podcast with uh, X and Cootie. And uh, I was also a guest star on the Iron Sequel, which is uh, an amazing show hosted by James. And we had a great time talking about Halloween Resurrection which the, with the famous line, Trick or treat, mother trucker. Folks, I'm going to go. I'm rambling. Here's me scrunching up my notes. Wow. Realistic sound effects. And uh, take care. Hope you guys are surviving this disgustingly hot summer. Unless you live somewhere like Australia where it's snowing, um, then stay warm, stay cool, stay dry. Goodbye. Hello, this is The Doom Show as a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. 
If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com.